G'day guys, I'm Ronnie Dahl and welcome to another episode of Modified. In this particular episode we have a Unimog. We have a big truck, a Unimog, a proper truck. How are you mate? Oh, Corona. Oh. The awkward handshake at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a Unimog, but what type of Unimog is it? It's a U1300L37. The U1300s are just a bit smaller than the, the U1700s, which are what most of the, the ex-army uh, ones are we have in Australia. And, smaller uh, as in wheelbase or width? Uh, just smaller as in uh, load capacity. The, ah. the bigger ones were okay. made for carrying a bit more. They, they were a bit taller, a bit bigger portal axles on them. Um, just bigger trucks, essentially. Um, trucks. And the, uh, <laughs> the L37 is just the, the wheelbase, 3.7 meters. What are we set up for? How far can you go? I'm assuming it's touring. Yep. Being this vehicle, it's not like a weekend warrior, that's for sure. No, no. Set up for reasonably long range touring as well as short trips around the place, but it's got dual fuel tanks on both sides. I've got some extra fuel jerry cans out the rear. Um, fuel capacity is in the main tanks is 180 liters and then another sort of 40 out the back. It's around sort of seven, 800 uh, kilometers before you need to, to fill up, but I just normally just stop off and top off whenever I get a chance, so. What's off. the top speed? Well, the tires are rated at, at 90 kilometers an hour, so we'll say 90. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Read between the lines there. Um, is it true that these are faster in reverse? Or is that a myth? Uh, I think that's a myth. You can shift gears in reverse, though. So every, every gear you can shift forward, you can shift in reverse as well. And this used to be a fire truck? It used to be a fire truck in Germany, yeah. Yeah, very good. Well, for every big bush truck, you're going to need a big bush bar, and we've got a, quite a few of them all over the vehicle, actually. Yeah, definitely. Let's start with this big one in the front here. Yeah, um, the, fr the front part was modified just to, to add in the, the winch, um, and then just, just beef up the, the guards for some new lights that we put in. Um, the rest of the, the bar was actually there existing, so. As in like a um, Unimog bar? That already came I don't know, at least this was the one that the fire department had in, in Germany. Uh -huh. uh, you can see just the, the, the center part of it was the, the metal that was added in and then we built yeah. this up to hold the hydraulic winch. So it's, all, it's in three different pieces then? Yeah, yeah it is, yeah. And the hydraulic winch, 15,000 yep. pound. Yep. I've used the front winch more than the, the rear winch. There's an electric one on the rear. Um, but I, I honestly haven't really been stuck very often. So. Mm. I've used it to tow, tow some trees around for firewood. I've pulled some other people out, um, but I haven't used it a tremendous amount. What's it like pulling someone else out with this, this big truck here? That's great, it's super easy. The, the gearing is so low in the truck itself, as well as the, the, the winch is really geared down too. So mm. um, you can basically just put it in neutral and just tell them to just steer themselves. So Yeah, nice. Just pull it on out. Awesome. It's a big winch, eh? Hey? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, you know heavy it is? No. Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks very heavy. Is that a sump guard? Uh, yeah, it is, yeah. Recovery points? Yeah, heaps, heaps of those around. When you use this winch being 15,000 pounds, is that enough 
to just do a straight line pull or do you, would you need to do a double line pull with this thing being so heavy? If you're really bogged down in some deep, nasty stuff, you'd, you'd probably want to put a winch block on it. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've actually struggled finding a winch block that's, that's rated high enough that isn't like, you know, like that's <laughs> carrying good, around a 20 kilo plate. Of, that's a good point, actually, because yeah. you've got to have one that's yeah, rated high gone, enough. I've gone everywhere to, to try to find it, find one that's, that's rated enough. And Oh, we've got the vice here. Oh, yeah. That's wicked. Yeah, that's coming handy for sure. Yeah? Yeah. Got track repairs? Yep. Yeah, it, uh, mostly like just re rebuilding anything. If you need to take stuff apart, I had to take part of the air system apart one time and having an actual vice to use there, putting the little camping table out and then have that to hold on to things. Yeah. Just makes your life so much easier. It's like a workshop. Yeah, it would, it would. Well, it is yeah. a <laughs> big workshop. We've got bars wrapped all around the top of the truck as well. Yeah, I, I'm sure you'd notice, but um, I try to drive down every track I can find and uh, those help keep branches from breaking things too bad. I definitely get scrubbed up a bit on the sides, but mm. it's not going to hurt anything. I see you've even gone to the to the length to protect your snorkel. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, your waiting depth is is what two point two something point, meters. Yeah, two point five. Two point five. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Well, let's go down the side and have a look. Another another bit of bar work just for access on the on the roof and protect the sides. Does this wrap all the way around the top then? There's basically a roof rack on top of there as well as there's, there's a whole bunch of bar work on top of the, um, the upper part of the, the back as well. So you can throw, I throw lighter stuff, swags and chairs and stuff up there if I need to. Okay. Um, keep the heavier stuff up front on top of the cab. And protection under here? Yeah, protection is, as well as just a step bar. Like I find this thing is so big to try to climb up into it, even you know trying to climb into the, into the back of it. If you didn't have a step, you'd, uh, You'd have a hard time getting up. Oh yeah, so you get enough room. Oh yeah, enough yeah, room to wedge your foot, foot in there. there. Yeah. 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 Wow, it's like a freaking limo, man. <laughs> <laughs> then we move on to the tray. Yep. Which so, I take as custom. Yeah. So m most of all, the the custom work was done by Uni Dan. They did a great job, and Dan was a great guy to work with on all of it. Mm. Um, the whole tray, the the back was originally fixed on. It had some big roller shutters when it was a fire truck. And we ripped that all off. Um, Dan built a, a flatbed tray, and then basically this just sits on with container locks. So there's four container locks on here, um, and there's some big extension arms I can plug in up here and over there and just pop this whole thing off and drive out. Um, I but, noticed there's something in between your cab here. Is that Yep, is, so is that's, that's, access, the, that's, that's the access, that's the crawl through. It's a flexible membrane, basically, so you can oh, articulate the truck. I've got on the buses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So you can go through back here into there. Yeah. That is cool. And I like the term pop-off camper rather than the jack-off one. <laughs> <laughs> so the tray acts as a rear bar. Yep. I can see your camper or storage or canopy overhangs a little bit. Um, yeah, so the rear, uh, there's basically a motorcycle holder slides into the rear here and then plugs in. It's got its own set of lights back here. Um, there's a crane to lift on motorcycles on and off or whatever you have on the back. Okay, so you got more than one bike? I do, yeah. Cool. Dirt bike and? Uh, dirt bikes, adventure bikes, electric motorcycles. Do you notice them in the hang off the back? Not, not with smaller bikes, so 250s or 450s, you'd, you wouldn't really notice them. You notice it if you put a 690 on it, and you definitely notice it if you have a 1090 uh, KTM or something on there. It's, okay. It's just the weight gets so far back. When, when, this, when this sits off here, the bike actually sits back about here. Yeah. Um, and that's just so far behind your rear axle, it, it does start to weigh down a bit. Okay. As well as in the back. So there's 150 liter water tanks either side that are built up in, uh, up in there. So 150 each 150 side? 150 each side. Oh, yeah. wow. And then you've got you know, your jerry cans there. There's 18,000 pound hydraulic winch or electric winch up under the back of here. There's our little backup camera up, up in here so we can see what's going on. Yeah, you, I think you need that one now. Yeah. <laughs> you got a pencil connection and a normal tow, yep. tow ball. Yep. And you're recovering off these yep. five, well, like six ton, or 5.6 tonners or something? Yeah. yeah. Which side is the exhaust on? That side? Uh, exhaust is over there. Okay. Does that, that, that hit the water up? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. It used to come out, out the back, but it just took another jog in the exhaust and um, I ended up hitting it when I was going over real nasty stuff. So um, Dan modified it to come nice and high up out the side. Okay. Also for going through water and stuff, it's just nice to have it up a bit higher. Ladder for getting in. Just side. access in the cab, yeah. Max tracks. Yeah, one of the sets. There's another one up top. Oh, at the very front, eh? Hey? Yeah. Mm. Up top on this side, we've got the awning. So it's 
270 degrees all the way around, sort of freestanding, has a support leg if it's windy if you want. How do you reach it? To... Uh, I've got another ladder inside, or you put that ladder out the back. Really, I carry two ladders around because everything's so high to get up top, you know, always moving them around the place. Yeah, okay. But yeah. And uh, yeah, basically identical to the other side, uh, access up to the top and just scrub bars around. And that's pretty much all the, all the bar work. Let's just point out that your spare tire is up there and how much does your spare weigh? Uh, it's about 200 kilos. 200. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The, uh, interesting change in those, eh? Uh, yeah, haven't had to take that down to change it yet. It's brand new. Okay. <laughs> Lights and communication for the beast. We have one antenna here. Yep. This is a UHF. Yep, so 80 channel um, UHF, um, all the controls basically on the, on the, uh, the mouthpiece. I've got a uh, separate UHF 5-watt uh, handheld one that I can just pass out if I need a spotter. Okay. Hand it out to somebody. Um, I've also got a, a sat phone that I have inside. Um, and then I have an iPad that I mount up the front. Just uh, has all the mapping and everything on there as well. Uh, as far as lights go, um, we redid the front, front lights. So these high and low LEDs, these are great. Um, the stock lights in Unimogs are, are pretty horrible. Yeah, just um, some big halogens, like yeah, big candles. Yeah, they're not, they're not great and then massive light bar up front, and then another light bar down under here as well. Oh, I didn't even see that one. So there's, there's no shortage of, mm. of light. That'll give you some bloody good spread being up there, right? Eh? Yeah, That's it's pretty great. high. It's huge, yeah, it's great. Does that reflect down here at all? Not at all, no, it doesn't bother me at all. When you're driving on the highway, yep. I'll take it you use, what, all of them, or just the bottom? Um, I'll just use these, uh, unless I'm you know, driving across the country or something, and, mm. and nice big roads, I'll, I'll turn those on, but you know, I'll get, I'll get flashed from further away than you can even nearly even see somebody when I have them all on, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they're higher than where you're sitting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any lights around the vehicle? We'll notice yeah. some lights on the sides. Yeah, so there's sort of side lights uh, up top uh, shining down. There's rock lights down on the bottom. There's a reverse light that comes on for the, for the rear. Okay. So there's, there's lights all, all around the whole thing, basically. And then I'll tell you, camping lights in the camping setup. And yeah, all too. yeah. There's lights under the doors. There's lights inside. Mm. Yeah. So no lack of lighting. No lights everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking about small tires and stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've got uh, yeah, minus AC seventy G um, tractor tires. Uh, I used to have a little bit smaller ones. Managed to fit some bigger ones on. These are actual tractor tires. Uh, no, they're, I mean, they're, they're road, road legal rated tires. I, I'm sure they use them in the agriculture um, businesses as well, but um, they're definitely yeah. legal for the street and, and road rated and everything. Wow, I'm about the same size as this wheel when I'm squatting. <laughs> <laughs> These ones are 425-75 R20. So that's, I think, if you converted that to inches, it'd be like just over a 45. Um, inch tall and it's it's about 17 inches wide. If you let them down, they keep getting wider. Yeah, look at your footprint already. Like, yeah, that is huge. That's like that footprint is like my vehicle on 15 psi. Yeah, that's yeah, it's quite <laughs> auto air or something here. Yeah, eh? so CTIS, so central tire inflation. So in the cab, I've basically got a switch um, for each tire, and I've got a readout up top tells me the temperature internally on each tire and, and gives me the pressure. So I can be letting up pressure and letting down pressure at any given point in time while we're driving along. That's amazing. Yeah. So that if we're heading amazing. down the track to the beach, you basically just flip them all on down and by the time you get to the beach, you're down to whatever you want to be at and mm. stop them. This is braided underneath here? Uh, yeah. To yeah it's pretty heavy, heavy duty. Yeah. I've just put an extra bit of spiral protection on there as well. Okay. You never had this snag on anything? I've never really had any issues with anything snagging on there. So. Okay. Yeah, and I can just, they're real easy to take off. There's just a quick connect fitting here and then you're just threading on the end there, so. These tires probably have about 25,000. Really? On them. Yeah, so they are, they are taller. I've swapped the front for the back. The, the rears wear faster, obviously, being the drive. Mm. Um, all the weight is. And... Yeah, all, all the weight and the drive. So I've, I've swapped front for back after driving over to, to Tassie and around the place, um, just to get them to, to wear a bit more evenly, but. Okay. They, they do actually wear quite well, and they're they're not really any noisier than a um, any sort of mud train would be, mm. even though they look like they might be. They're not. 
Let's talk about your tire pressures. Being yep. this size, what tire pressure are you on the highway? They're rated at 2.5 bar, so like 50, 55 PSI or so. Um, I normally, on the roads, I run any between 40, um, sort of 40 to 45. Mm -hmm. And by the time these tires heat up, uh, they get up to just over 50. Okay. So I've got an alarm set. If I go over 55 um, PSI, I have an alarm goes off. So you can drop a bit and, of pressure. And I can drop some pressure. I normally just pull over because the, the portal diffs get really hot. You don't want to run those too hard and get them too too hot. So mm -hmm. I know that basically the, the pressure is building up um, is normally an indication that, that things are starting to warm up. So just pull over and have a bit of a rest. Corrugations wouldn't feel much in this, would you? No, but you sort of drop down to maybe 35 mm. and you really feel nothing. These tires are so big, they kind of roll over. Any of the normal corrugations yeah. caused by 30 to 35 inch tires, yeah. you don't even really feel them, especially if you make them a little softer. You need a Unimog convoy to be able to feel them. If I'm out on the sand, I, I go down to, I think the lowest I've gone is probably about 15. Um, just scared of ever losing a bead because yeah, I really don't want to change pain. any of these tires. <laughs> that'd be a pain to put yeah. on, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, I think we're done with the tires. Let's jump onto your suspension. And you've, I looked at your shocks, they're like... Yeah, yeah they're massive. They're massive. Yeah, so the springs are upgraded off of a U1700, so just a bit of a bigger truck. It's got king shocks all the way around on it. I've got some spacers put in just to Space down, I think 50 mil, just give me a little bit more of a lift on there. The ride quality is actually pretty good on mm. it for, for what it is, so. What's the height, have you raised it at all? Or um, you, you, don't, you don't raise those, do you? You just, you rely on the, um, the height it's already got with the portals, is that correct? Uh, yeah, it is raised to 50 mil. <clears throat> Aside from that, no, it's just heavier duty springs in the rear. And yeah, just the 50 mil. You mm. really, you don't need much, they're already massive. It's huge clearance. And the ground there. clearance on them is great, and then portal axles gives you even that much more. If you want to tell any kangaroos out there just to lay down and you drive over them. Yeah, it'd be better if hurt. they just laid down and they'd, they'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Under the hood, right. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's a big truck and a small hood. It is. Oh, your little key. Yeah, there's a, a homemade key. So she just pops up here. There we are. Man, that's not, tight. not really much to see. Oh. <laughs> um, got an intercooler over here. Um, they got added on. It's a uh, 5.7 liter inline straight six, just big turbo diesel. It's called a 366A. Um, these these trucks this year of truck came with a 352A, um, and the 366 is just a bit a bit of a newer engine, slightly different uh, modified. Um, stroke on it I think pretty similar just when we were building this whole truck up um, weren't really sure of the history on the older engine and so got swapped out for a newer one so have you had much go wrong with it not had uh, any trouble with the engine no I've replaced the starter motor um, but never never had an issue it's always run really well super consistent easy truck and it's easy to work on as well um, just being all mechanical really okay Easy to work on, as in the components, but access-wise, we... <laughs> yeah, access-wise is hard at times, but um, as far as just having pretty basic tools and being able to sort out problems, um, it's it's been easy enough for that. We added in uh, the aircon system as well, so there's a few extra belts and extra things added on. Um, put a solenoid in so that I'm not constantly running the hydraulic circuit, so I've got a solenoid I can actuate to turn on if I need to use the winch. So I'm just sort of free spinning a belt rather than having it under load the whole uh, time. Yeah. Okay. Um, just taking that weight off of the engine. We got the injector pump modifications done. We added on the intercooler, um, and that definitely boosted up the power. I've tried to take it to a dyno a few different places and kind of got the starstruck face of like, you're not putting that on my dyno. <laughs> so um, I have no idea exactly how much power, but I yeah. somewhere maybe close to 300 horsepower. Okay. And I don't really know the torque stats, but um, yeah. it definitely gets around pretty well. Uh, we're going to have a look at all the access and sleeping quarters and all your storage. Yeah, cool. Let's do it. Small door uh, on the bottom here is the generator. So that guy just slides on out. I've got um, two additional house batteries that are 120 amp hour AGM batteries. And if I ever need to charge those up, I have a 6,000 watt uh, inverter. I can basically run this 
plug it right underneath into, into here and charge the batteries up huh. uh, if I need to. Neat. Um, <clears throat> it also runs a uh, reverse osmosis water system that I carry sometimes with me so we can turn and salt water into fresh drinking water. So you have a desalination plant yeah. with you in there. Yeah. <laughs> So you could, you could camp up indefinitely, so long as you got food. Yeah, you'd have fresh water all the time. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Desaline up. How many liters can you do per, per I, I th hour or whatever? Um, I think it's about 150 liters an hour. Wow. It obviously runs through a lot, a lot more than that. You're, you're, mm. you're, uh, I don't know all the technology, how it works, but basically two big filters, you're, you're pressing the salt water through and um, getting the clean water out and then just ejecting the extra salty water um, off the top of that. Okay. So what you're actually producing in fresh water is about 150 liters per, per hour. So two hours you're full. Two hours you're mm. full, yeah. Top hatches here um, is just uh, two, two gas bottles up there. Got the, um, just a welding helmet and a light. Welding helmet? Yeah, yeah we, got a, we got a welder, a 140 amp hour stick welder I carry around as well. Which you have the generator to run, so yep. you're all good. Actually, the welder I run off the uh, inverter, so there's a 6,000 watt inverter. Oh, you have um, a 6,000 watt inverter? Yeah, I do, yeah. Wow. The, the welder won't run off the generator, but the generator can charge the batteries, and the batteries can go through the <laughs> inverter, and the inverter can power the welder. So Yeah, okay. Interesting. Um, and then the gas is all plumbed down. There's quick fittings on either side of the truck uh, here um, and the other side. So this is normally the shower side, so shower hooks onto here. Um, and the other side uh, has mm. the stove. Let's go to the right open, one. open her up. All right. Here we are. So you, well, you got access here, and then you got a drawer system there. Yep. So there's drawer system on both sides. This this drawer's on this side. Uh, normally, just I've got a Julka uh, hot tap water system. Um, so for hot water for, for showers or dishwashing or whatever you need. Hoses and bits and mm -hmm. adapting fittings and all that sort of stuff. The other drawers are just full of, you know, towels, toiletries, um, a bit of gear in the top one. And then sort of, yeah, uh, up top I've got fishing gear and um, it depends on what trip I'm going on, what, what we're taking yeah. with us, so. Fishing rods, spear guns. Yeah, around. Oh uh, yeah, so you got your less attractive to bugs and your white light. Yep. So up there is where you sleep, eh? So th does the top pop up? Yeah, open? so the whole top pops up. Might just take a minute and pop it all up. Yeah, let's do it. So the electric arms moving? Uh, no, arms? it's, it's uh, no, it's all air powered. So it's basically columns of air that push it up. So it starts going by itself and you kind of give it a bit of a boost. Ah, so we've actually got like airbags on the side there, which I guess you refer to as air columns. A lot of air driven things on this vehicle, eh? Yeah, there definitely are. Yeah, so these, these struts that basically push the roof up are driven by a small little compressor. Flip her on, let her run, build it some pressure, come up here, give a bit of a push. Um, pops up and then just put in some supports here to just make sure it won't come down on you once the once the air settles or else you'd be trapped up here for good. <laughs> Screens all the way around, it gives you a, sort of a 360 degree view. Little fan up here if you ever ever want to use it um, at night pull you down. Oh you saw two, that. Two speeds. Yeah I um, saw it down at this level but then yeah, obviously it lifts it up. Hooked up. Um, there's a few lights up here that are just sort of touch. You just touch them they're, they're on off um, by touch and uh, yeah, there's storage both sides, so it's real big queen size sort of bed with extra room on each side. On the back side and over here, there's um, storage all over the place that just pieces just pull up to whatever you need. Um, power points up here as well, um, so you can throw your phone on top of here and, and charge it oh, cool. at night. That's wicked. So you just roll up, pop top. Yeah, bed's made, throw the pillows out, hop up, shut the doors. You could have all your bedding up here as well and leave yeah, it. Yeah, I just leave all the bedding in here, so um, just have it made. Basically, throw the pillows into the into the middle here, and then when we shut the top down, the sides all sort of fold in and it all collapses down. That yeah. is wicked. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. if wind blowing one way, you can basically shut one side, open the other side, and then you got a nice view still. Yeah. Um, without worrying about the wind blowing through here. But when it's hot, it'd be nice to have. When it's hot, open, it's eh? nice to have a breeze because you mm -hmm. literally have a breeze across your whole body. Awesome. And it's awesome to wake up. You know, we're 
a good few meters off the ground here, you really have a good view of wherever you are. Yeah, you're yeah. up a few meters, that's for sure. Yeah. We're higher than a snorkel, so we're probably at about four meters now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. All right. Well, let's um, have a look under here, eh? What's in, what's yeah, in it's just more storage. So this is, uh, this is basically <clears throat> the center of both of the boxes there. There's a bit of storage um, on the inside over here. And then there's a crawl through um, to the cab up in there. Oh, that's that one there, eh? So all the, all the tie downs, these basically, these are all adjustable on all these tracks here. You can you can move your tie tie downs anywhere you want. Basically, these just, just pop up. Yeah. And they'll you know they'll go anywhere you want. Yeah, these are cool. Which Pretty handy tracks. Su super well. handy tracks. Yeah. Mm. What do you normally store in here then? Um, well, I normally have like an extra esky um, in the back here, and then all the just big bulky stuff. You know, normally. Um, sort of have a toilet over here for the missus, um, and then have chairs, um, boxes clothing, food, boxes, whatever. You can access in here from inside the cab as well. Mm. So try to have some usable stuff sort of towards the back that you can reach from the other side. Uh, Anything else, leave a bit of room to crawl up into here, and then you can access it all from here, yeah. pull it out. You said something about a kitchen. Yeah, mate. So kitchen hiding inside of here. She just folds out. <laughs> no way. That's pretty cool. So that's oh, the, old uh, school gas burner. Old school low pressure gas burner. I normally have a, a higher pressure one I keep in the back there as well. But this one, this one just does a great job. Um, a bit of a weather shield for it there as well. So if needed, like we were talking on the other side, so the gas fittings quick connect just comes up and pops into there. Oh, that's awesome. And then you can just basically just Pull this forward a bit, throw this over the back, and, and away you go on it. Off we go. All right. Got a bit of extra storage for pots and pans and um, whatever you need to use down down below. What's for lunch? I don't know. <laughs> Check the fridge. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, a bit of storage, eh? Yeah, quite a bit of room in there. Stuff in whatever you need. If you can't fit it in here, fit it in up top. Cast iron pot there. Yep. Very yeah. nice. I would have guessed that would have been a toolbox or something. Yeah, well the other side is. Yeah, it's nice that it all folds together. Ah. And then there's access for water over here as well. So you just hook in a hose to the, the water system, um, turn on the pump and you got your own hose to, to clean with, spray with, to, to do whatever you need. Nice. And you can turn on the, the hot water system there and get, get hot water out as well. If it helps washing up the pots and pans and stuff. So all the drawers over here are mostly used for food, pots, pans, cleaning stuff, all that. So sort of from, from the bottom up, uh, try to put the heaviest stuff in the bottom, the biggest stuff in the, the bottom drawers here. So these ones would be, you know, mostly pots and, and pans and, and, and heavier cooking stuff. A bit messy at the moment there. Moving up the way, if I'm going on, a, I'm not really set up for a, for a long trip right now, but I'd probably have more canned food in, in the next one up. You know, lighter weight, coffee stuff, hot chocolate, drink, drink sort of stuff, mixes. Okay. Um, and then in, in the top one, I think just got some air hoses in there at the moment, but I'd, I normally have cereal and, and that sort of stuff up in the top. I know just have a, a, a big old snatch strap here. Luckily, haven't had to use it yet, but... Six, chicken are riding. 16 tons. <laughs> 16 tons. Yeah. Wow, look how thick it is. Yeah. It's like double or triple layer. Yeah. Definitely yeah. don't want to be busting any of those, trying to yank yourself out of no. something. No. Surprising how little room it takes up, really. Yeah. yeah, it's good when you get it all strapped together here, so. That's cool. Um, uh, now, obviously, there is a ladder around that um, Matt uses on this side, but the cameraman's on it at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we got a few ladders. Uh, another one here, so more cleaning stuff. Uh, yeah, pots, pans, just some. I normally have a few different methods of, of stuff to cook with, so just an angle fridge freezer combo, which uh, she's nice and tall. That's a big one. Uh, but that's why we got the ladder there as well, so. Ah, you got um, the, yeah. Yep. What size is this one? Uh, I think it's 80. It's an 80, so it's half freezer, half fridge. Um, just have the, the cover on it there. Help, help keep her nice and cool. A lot of room there. So. Yeah, heaps of room. Keep stuff nice and cold. Very nice. That's it. And then if you're going for a, a, like a bigger trip or you're staying somewhere longer, you've got that access. You I talk normally throw, throw a big esky in the back as well. Mm. And um, I can keep freezing water bottles and tossing them in as I need. Ah, uh, it just course. depends how many people we're traveling with. Like Which you can freeze in this. Yeah, exactly. It's freeze, quite handy. Freeze it in there. Mm. 
there's capacity for um, six people, um, six seat belts in here. So sometimes we got a heap of people and need a lot of food. So <laughs> drink a lot of beer. We need to have a lot of cold storage. You got hot water, you got, yeah. Yeah, everything. Desalinator. Everything, man. <laughs> this is like a, it's like a doomsday vehicle. Yeah, you could disappear for a while. Let's go to the cab and this cab is like a limo. Where did, uh, where did Ronnie head off to? Hello? Is that you, mate? Yeah, mate. There you are. I thought I'd, you know, try to cubby hole out. Thought you were taking a nap back there in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Interior. Oh. oh, I sat on the wrong thing there. <laughs> you know what? We haven't actually seen your electrical system yet. Yep. It's underneath the back seat here. That one, sweet. This one, yep. Oh, look at that. There we are. Two auxiliaries, I'll take it, DC? Yeah, two 120 amp hour AGMs that are house batteries. Yeah. Uh, another one that's a <clears throat> starter battery. You can link them all together if you need to. So you've moved the crank battery then? That's from... right, yeah. Where, where is it normally? Um, it's on, on a lot of Unimogs, it's in a, um, a metal sort of box that's right behind one of the front tires. So it's down low near oh, water and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So. Like most trucks have. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, what is this? Uh, 6,000 watt inverter. Wow. So 6,000 watt inverter, that's actually, the box is actually quite small than what I expected. Yeah. That's, I think 6,000 peak, 3,000 continuous. Um, but it's good enough to run, a, uh, run the welder. I can run a uh, stick welder at about 90 amps. Um, which is good to, you know, weld anything I need to. For short periods of time or? Uh, reasonably continuous, um, yeah. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. What have you had to weld? She's the only welding on an actual trip I've had to do was I had a, uh, one of my rims had a, a leak on one of the factory welds um, and had to take it down, sort of repair it on the side of the road and put a new weld bead on the inside and uh, patch it up. Yeah, right, did you crack it? or? I, no, I didn't, um, and it wasn't on. It wasn't on anywhere near the outside. Obviously, you can't really damage these rims with how big the tires are. Yeah. Um, it was just an internal um, weld bead, and I don't know how it broke. And a uh, supplier sent me on a new set of wheels because of that. But um, yeah, I was up by Shark Bay, sort of in the middle of nowhere, and uh, started losing tire pressure. And, okay. What else is going on there? You uh, got those are a set of solenoids for all the controls for the central tire inflation. So when you're flipping the okay. switches that are up in the cab up there. Um, actuating solenoids and sending air pressure in or out. Um, yeah. Uh, the rest of it's just well, a lot of fuses. They're all labeled for where they go, what they're for. Mm. Um, very organized and yeah. very handy spot just to have it in there too. Yeah. That's that's really cool. Is there anything under this seat? Uh, this is just storage. So belts, um, tools, mm. just extra storage really. And you mentioned you could make this into a bed in here as well. Yep. Yep. That's right. So. When this folds down, all the seat covers come off. They go down into the, into the middle here. There's some, some rods that come across on the bottom to support these, and you got another queen size bed. So, yeah, right. Yeah. That's pretty handy. Yeah, definitely. Comfortable as well. So how many people could you sleep in this vehicle? Um, two, up, two upstairs, I don't know, two How many here. people do you sleep in each bed? That's the question, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's two queen size beds, um, and then obviously there's two seats up front that tilt nearly all the way back. Okay. Those are pretty comfy. Yeah. So like you'd, you'd be able to sleep six people if you wanted to. And then yeah. if you had a swag or something or a tent or whatever. Is all this custom? Yeah, this whole, this whole roof was chopped. The whole roof was raised. There's two aircon units built into the top, one for the front, one for the rear. All of this was, was completely remade by Unidan. Yeah. This is like a whole van in here. And then you've got all that behind you. This, yeah. is, this is so wicked. I think we should go to the front because there's a whole heap of levers there that we can talk about. Yep. And uh, not only will we talk about the, um, what's in the interior in the front cab, we'll also talk about what gears you use to drive and what they all do. It's a lot, it's like I can see five levers, six levers from here. Well, here we are. And this is the second Unimog I've been inside in the front. Um, this is very similar, so it looked a bit like a similar design, but I guess Unidan did build the other one too. Yep. 
So this must be part of his design, eh? Yeah, he's sort of come up with this whole layout and sort of how these, all, all the different units sort of sit together. So, yeah, we've got just a, a DVD player up here. It's got HEMA mapping on it. Um, it also houses um, the, the camera for the rear. So you can flip between seeing the rear camera um, on and off. Um, these are aircon, so you got your front aircon and your rear aircon. Uh, that button just turns the aircon on. Um, so we've got all of our other gauges and everything up here. So batteries, so battery one is your um, starter battery. Battery two, house batteries. The two of them joined together. Yeah, two yeah. of them joined together. Um, <laughs> there's our dash, dash cam starting up there now. Um, so boost, um, some of the oil temperatures, um, temperature exhaust, uh, gas temperature. Uh, fuel gauge for the left side, fuel gauge for the right side, and a plethora of lights um, hooked together, batteries, so rock lights, side lights, side lights, this is a flashing beacon up top, uh, the roof LED, the lower LED, um, sat phone, some charging points, this is part of the central tire inflation system there, so this is just tire pressures front and back, okay. um, and then it can also do the temperatures. So question with, when you lower and raise your air pressure, yep. you could come from the highway, ah, oh, I'm gonna go drive on the beach. You can yep. lower in here yep. and then drive as you're lowering pressure. Yep. And then when you leave, you just raise the pressure again. Yeah, exactly. While you're just driving. Yeah, so the, all these switches <laughs> right down here, I put on some new cool rocker that? switches that have covers on them. So basically if you flip the covers up out of the way, hmm. um, uh, these are the rear. Those are the front. If, if you want to raise up your tire pressure, you basically just flip them up and it'll just start putting pressure in. Mm -hmm. Up, up. These are auto to shut off. Um, once you've hit the pressure you want, and if you want them down, you just go ahead and push them down. You can hear it. Oh. And then once you've reached whatever pressure you want on the screen there, just go ahead and flip them off. So you can be driving any speed you want and controlling the tire pressures. That's awesome. Yeah. And you got a live reading as you're driving. Yeah, exactly. Cool. The levers. Yep. There's a lot of them. Fair, fair amount of these. So, uh, parking brake here. Uh, that just engages that. So, here's our shifter here. Um, as you can see, there's there's eight gears. There's a split halfway in, in the gearbox. So, if you have to be in third or fourth to be able to get into to fifth and sixth, um, it, when it transfers over, mm. so you, you can't go from, from first to fifth. Mm -hmm. um, and normally on the road, I, I'm never normally, I, I'm normally in fourth, just driving on the road to start out in and then go up the way. Uh, this truck has an overdrive in it as well. So this is your overdrive switch. So basically that's 16 gears mm -hmm. then you have to play with if you want. 16 gears up and 16 gears back. And if you want to double that again, I've got um, a working group gear set, which is like a super low range. Um, so there's 32 forward and 32 reverse gears if you ever wanted to use wow. them. <laughs> and so you can shift just the same going forward as you do in reverse, you shift. Yeah. And this is your forward and reverse lever. So up is, in, is forward and basically you just have to push the clutch in. Um, you can leave it, leave it in gear, you're driving forward and go to reverse. You just go back, I put a beeper on it. Okay. Um, you don't have to disengage the clutch or anything. And then these two are hydraulics. So you got your winch up front, your hydraulic winch. And, and then the spare. Your auxiliaries, yeah. Okay, awesome. And these two guys down here are um, just your fuel tank selector for drawing and your return for overflow. So there's just a little arrow on top, so. And there's your diagram, which you. Yeah, it's a bit worn out. Yeah. But that's basically telling you how the diff locks work, so. Um, yeah, because these come with diff locks front and rear, standard, yeah, full, right? Yeah, there's full diff locks, yeah. So this uh, this selector knob over here, basically, if if, you're just in, um, it's called zero, zero mode, which is basically just power to your rear diff. Mm -hmm. um, you can lock the center diff, or you can, you can lock both front and rear diffs. Okay, there's and, no option to lock one, a front or rear? Uh, well, rear, rear is basically, um, you're, you're on rear in, in the beginning, yeah. um, and then you're either putting it to the middle or fully locked. Um, all the uh, way. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. And you can sort of do that when you're driving around whatever speed, you don't have to do anything special. There's no, yeah. nothing to flip or do anything, just playing with that. We just use the iPad, um, put a SIM card into it and then uh, navigate around. And I normally just carry a little battery bank um, just for ease of use for whatever I want. Yeah. There are charge points around and 
Obviously batteries last for quite a while, but to just have an extra lithium battery sitting in here, it's just a nice little table as well, so. Because you can, there's so much room. <laughs> now, you can't have an iPad mini if you've got a Unimog. That would just be wrong, would it not? <laughs> what mount is that on? Uh, I think they're called Sea Sucker. Um, <laughs> it's like a serious mount, eh? Hey? Yeah, they're really good. They're, um, it's the only mount I've found that hasn't vibrated out of the way. Um, so it's basically a suction that you, you pump it and it extract the air out. Uh, um, and it's the only one that's had a strong enough um, arm on it that this thing won't just bend all over the place. Yeah. So that thing actually holds this big iPad in place perfectly fine no matter what we're driving mm. on. Which is super handy. It also works as well, like if you, if you go upstairs in the bed, just pop this off, put it on the ceiling, and then you've got a TV basically you can use. Okay. And we normally carry around on one of the big back doors. Um, we've got like a projector screen with some Velcro you stick on. We just got a little projector so you can hop out in the seats and watch a 70 inch TV screen play a movie at night. <laughs> so. These seats, are they standard? Uh, no, definitely not. Standard seats in the Unimogs are just a, a bench seat. Um, so these ones are, were added in as well as all the, the carpet and uh, yeah, Unidan really redid the whole interior and their air ride seats now which are much more comfortable. Mm. Good for, for long trips. Well, it's Q&A time, and uh, here you go, mate. Awesome. Stubby holder. Thank you. I found it from a, from a website. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shameful <Cheers>. plug. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. The big Unimog. I think we should definitely crush some Unimog myths. Yeah. But before that, why not a Suzuki Sierra? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I guess I've always just liked big trucks um, and I always grew up, I'd, I'd seen Unimogs, thought I, I, I always wanted to get one and uh, had an opportunity to get one, had an opportunity to do some work on it. Um, had Dan from Unidan um, over east there help me build this one and yeah, it's been, been a lot of fun. Uh, had a lot of adventures with it and uh, yeah, really glad that I, that I did get one. How often do you catch yourself walking out to the driveway and then looking back at your car? Truck. Oh, it's I, I, I made room for it in the garage. I got a massive garage. <laughs> you got a garage you can fit this? Yeah, yeah, I do. What, and just in or? No, it's four four meter high roller door. So, <laughs> uh, no, it puts a smile on my face every day I see it, so it's great. How long is it overall? Uh, just over seven meters, I think. Wow, so, I mean, they look big, but they're actually not really that long. Not, not compared to like a delivery truck, you know, a big, any of the big flat trucks you'd see driving mm. around the city or something, they'd be a lot, a lot more difficult to drive around. Well, you're, you're only one meter longer than, than a Land Cruiser. Yeah. Thereabouts, pretty yeah. close. Yeah. So it's actually not that long. Um, should we just squash some of these myths now? Sure, mate. All right, well, I'll start with the first one. So driving around town as a, as a daily, yep. is, is this the ultimate daily or is this, because people, <laughs> people look at it and go, you can't drive that around town. You'd normally hear that, right? Yeah, I think the biggest misconception would be the tires are horribly impractical. Um, it's too big to drive around, and really none of that's true. Like, yeah, would you would you go into town and want to park parallel park this thing? Um, not all the time, but <laughs> can you do it? Yeah, quite easily. Yeah. Uh, I think just like driving anything, if you get used to driving it, uh, it's pretty easy to drive. Mm. You know, it's a it's a big vehicle, but it's it's not uh, overwhelming to to drive around at all. You are wide. How wide are you? Close to 2.5. Okay. So it's it's pretty full lane of traffic I'm filling up there. Mm. And on, on any of the, the real tight roads, um, you'd know about it. But I think that just because the front the front tires um, have massive guards on them, and it's, I've got mirrors looking down like on my left side front tire, and I can sort of get a real good position where I'm sitting from, from the seating angle that I, I'm never uncomfortable driving, even on, on narrow roads. Pretty You're easy to do. Really good visibility. Yeah, yeah. Myth number two, it's too difficult to drive down tight tracks towards the beach. Yeah, I'd say kind of like any vehicle, if you're worried about it ever being scraped or scratched or touched by anything, then yeah, you won't make it very far. But I, I haven't found a track yet that I haven't been able to go down, honestly. Mm. Um, it's, you're, you're telling us about Wilbinga. Yeah. And for those local to Perth, you know Wilbinga. He got that down Wilbinga on most of the tracks, eh? I've got it down every track in Wilbinga. I've got it down all like three or four of the different entry tracks. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. That's no, pretty much most of them though. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no issues driving around on all those tracks there. Mm. And that's pretty tight as it is for a normal vehicle. So there you go. I mean, all your panels and stuff are up higher too. So it's, yeah. it's all low scrub there. Yeah. I guess you might be limited where the, there's a lot of trees. Yeah. Yeah. If, if there's any like big tight trees, especially like anything that'd be overhanging, um, sort of at a steep angle that a, a vehicle that's shorter in height would make an under, mm. that might be a limitation that I'd sort of need to just pay attention. But again, I can see in the mirrors, I can see in the back. Um, I can see everywhere I'm going with it. And I do have scrub bars all along the side and up on the top, on the back that sort of stick out and protect it. So i okay. um, not too worried about touching things here and there. Just take it nice and slow. Slow and steady. Yeah. Myth number three, your tires are way too expensive. Again, not true. Um, I suppose depends what type of tire you buy and, and where you buy them from. I got, I got these tires from Europe and just sent them over. Just over 400 euros each. Um, so, you know, in the magnitude of, what would that be, 800? About 800 bucks. 800, 850 bucks, something like that. And, you know, I think you could spend as much on a, a performance tire for a large SUV. Mm. So they, they are expensive, but they aren't as expensive as they would look. The fourth myth, you use way too much fuel. Yeah, again, I'd, I'd say n not true. Um, particularly with this truck, um, I do have an overdrive in it, which really helps. So it gives you another sort of 20% of a gear ratio on the top. Um, so when I'm cruising along, uh, these tires are speed rated for 90 Ks an hour. I normally hang around there or 85. I'm not trying to get anywhere too fast. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting at about, uh, I'm at about 1900 RPMs at 100 kilometers an hour. So I can really just cruise along pretty easy there. I don't think I'd be burning any more fuel than a heavily loaded Land Cruiser with a trailer, 200 series with a V8. Um, so I'm sort of in the, in the yeah, mid 20s, in the mid 20s. Mid 20s, yeah. yeah. That's actually not too bad. Yeah. There are some vehicles out there, I don't know which ones, but yeah, when they tow something big, they're. Mm. Look, you're not towing, but you are probably weighing combined tonnage is about the same, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say fully loaded down, all the water tanks, full of fuel, full of gear, full of people, you know, somewhere in between eight, nine ton. Um, and it's pretty flat face, you know, it's got a, a a pretty big uh, surface area of wind. It's sort of pushing it's along. Aerodynamic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, it, it gets on just fine. Mm. Yeah. What is the worst situation you've been in, in the Unimog, as in like stuck? I've never actually been stuck in this. Yeah? Believe it or not, I've never been stuck, but I, I've probably been cautious to not put myself in stupid positions because it is a massive vehicle. Um, and I don't want to get in a situation where I'm really teetering on that fine line of uh, disaster because it could be massive disaster if mm -hmm. it ever was. I'd say worst sort of case scenarios are just getting real close to trees on real steep slopes. Um, as far as those sort of situations go though, it does have a low range gearbox as well. And I just put it in low range and just sort of crawl along. You okay. could nearly get out of the cab and leave the throttle chalked on and, and just slowly walk alongside the thing. It goes so slow. So that slowing everything down really helps in making it safer, I think, that just sort of take it nice and easy. How do you go about beast driving? And is there, is there anything specific that you, you do to not get yourself into trouble, to minimize the risk of getting into, yeah. getting into the deep end, basically? Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely you wouldn't want to be buried halfway up um, in this thing in the sand somewhere because you wouldn't get out unless you had a, a D10 dozer to pull you. <laughs> um, but I, I've never really been stuck bad in the sand, I guess, first off, it's a super capable vehicle for it. Just lower the tire pressures down and you can get anywhere you need to. Mm. But um, secondly, if there's ever something really dodgy, I just get out and walk it beforehand. You know, there's, you can't say enough for just going and checking something out rather than heading down that way, especially with a big vehicle. It's, it's perfectly capable to back up or do whatever you need to do, but I, I try not to head down something unless I know what's at the end of it. A question I always ask, but with this Unimog, what are your top Three favorite mods, not not must do, but favorite yeah. mods. Uh, my favorite ones would be the tires, um, the front and rear winches, and then the CTIS um, system to be able to inflate and deflate the tires on the go with switches in the in the cab. That is probably my favorite mod too. Yeah. Just being able to do that, I would love to do that to oh, my that's vehicle. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Righto, Matt. Thanks for bringing the Unimog on. Yeah, cheers, mate. Do a bit of a cheers there. It's been many, many moons since we had a Unimog on last. 
Uh, but this one here is definitely kitted out for the long haul. Yeah. So, can people ask questions on this modified episode, and will you be there to answer them when we release it? Yeah, I'll do. I'll do my best on YouTube, or you can find me on on Facebook. Um, send me a message or something. My name is Matt Waters. Um, get on there, and yeah, happy to answer questions for anybody that that has them. There you go, guys. He's committed to being up 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning <laughs> to <laughs> answer the questions. <laughs> well, thereabouts. <laughs> All right, Matt. All right, guys. Cheers for watching. See you next time.